Hey, welcome back to the You Can Do It channel. Today's project is going to be creating corbels out of scrap lumber that we had lying around from this porch pergola that we built over the winter. So, And this is the dimensional lumber that we used when we made the covered porch. This is a six by six pressure treated. It's about 24 inches long. People, most, most people throw this away, consider it a scrap, but this is what you can make with it. We didn't throw anything away. So as you can see, you can see the six by six buried right in between two pieces of one by six. Chris went ahead and uh, used a scroll saw to make this really nice design. Then he glued those pieces together in a vise. And then we went ahead and put some crackle paint on it, some glaze, some stain, and we made this beautiful corbel along with its twin. They're currently for sale on eBay, and we'll leave the link below if you're interested in purchasing these. And this here is a, uh, it's a four by eight scrap piece that was also used out there. This is the dimensional lumber we use. So today we're gonna show you how to make a rustic, primitive corbel um, and we're going to show you step by step how to create this out of this scrap piece of wood so let's get to it we decided to go ahead and show you guys just a little bit closer view of what these corbels look like noticed on the last video they were a little washed out just want to go ahead and show you what they look like so that you can see what you can do with what would otherwise be considered scrap lumber and uh, you could put it all to good use and make some pretty amazing stuff. We will show you step by step so you can do it too. I'll begin with a layout of your cut for the actual corbel. So um, I have lots of different patterns that I've made. I make these out of eighth inch MDF or masonite. Um, it's it's cheap, real cheap wood. You can get a four by eight sheet very inexpensive at Lowe's or Home Depot. And I'll use these as my patterns when I find something that I like. Um, you can just kind of sketch it out. I cut these out on a scroll saw. Um, if you don't have a scroll saw, you can use a jigsaw, a very inexpensive tool. Um, so these are just some of the patterns that I've made over the years. Um, so this particular pattern here is what we're gonna go with today. Um, I freehand this using, um, well, you could, this was part of a bucket. I got this cut right here. I took this bucket here and laid this guy right in here like that. Got the, got the cut there and traced that out and then freehand the rest of it. Um, you can just get very creative. I mean, you can make your own design. So... What I always try to do when I lay this out is I try to see if I can get two corbels out of one. Um, and in this cut here, since it's eight inches with eight inches wide by four inches deep, I was able to get these two cuts out of it after I cut the scraps out, which you could make a corbel out of this, or you could just use this one small shelf, shelf corbel it's pretty thick and it's short. Um, just the ideas that you can do with these is endless rather than just throwing it away. So I have so it's traced and it's ready to go on the bandsaw. I got the four by eight and I'm gonna go ahead and proceed with putting a topper on the top of the corbel. I got some scrap 2x6 here. Um, once again, this stuff was um, throwaway stuff. Um, it's 9 inches tall, 2x6, and I'm going to put a coping edge around it on the routing table. So I'm going to take you over there and show you how I do that. And we're going to use a quarter inch cove bit here to put a cove on the top of the board. the 
tops to the top of the corbel by gluing it and nailing it. Um, so basically, I'm going to get these guys squared up over the corbel. Um, you want to measure, get it, as, get it completely centered over the corbel. And I usually take my pencil. This is 3 8 reveal on both sides. I'll put a small hairline pencil line here on top so I kind of have an idea of where it's going to go when I put the glue on it. Um, but also it gives me an idea of where not to put the glue. You don't want the glue to be so close to the line when you go to nail it, it oozes out. You want to have a, a, a rag or a wet rag handy because the stain, it won't take a stain in those areas if you have the glue um, shown. So we're going to go ahead and get some glue on here. I don't put too much on, just enough to... I'm using my finish nailer. It's an 18 gauge, or I'm sorry, 16 gauge nailer, two and a half inch nails. We're ready now for the sanding process. Um, I'm going to go with a real rough texture. Um, this probably isn't like a circular sawn look. It's even more aggressive than that. In order to, to achieve that, I'm going to use my angle grinder with 60, a 60 grit disc sander on it. Um, it's, it's pretty aggressive. The other thing too to, to know is that I'm using kind of a soft pine. Um, if you're using the hardwood like oak or maple, um, it's going to be a lot harder to get these grooves in it. You'll, you'll be able to achieve it, but you're going to go through more sanding discs, and then it's going to be more harder on the angle grinder. So this is a soft pine. It's like a grade maybe two. Um, so it's going to be easy to get these sanding um, divots in the wood when I go to sand. All right, here we go. aggressively just gouging into the wood to where the blade was just taking me off the disc was just getting radical I was just going left to right left to right and then I mean it, 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 it takes a little while to get all the way down but but as you start you get used to the, the, the pattern and the motion of going through it and then I would come back after I got all the way down here I would come back I would change the direction the way the the uh, disc was running and I would come in and I'd hit just a few random marks here and there just to kind of break up the the pattern here and, and ultimately this is what you get I didn't do the top I left the top smooth just in case somebody would want to stick these up against a mantle around a fireplace um, but we're going to go ahead and proceed with the next step and that's doing the twigs and pine cones All right, for the sake of time, we went ahead and this corbel here for you. We use special walnut, and uh, Minwax is always an excellent product to use. So special walnut gives it that really nice, dark, rustic look. Also, over the summer, we collected pine cones when they were nice and dry. We'll show you a trick on how we actually took these pine cones, 
cut them in half so that we can use them for projects like this. The next thing is collecting twigs. You want to make sure your twigs that you collect are cut off of a fresh living tree. If you cut twigs off of something that's dead or you collect them off the ground, uh, you will not be able to bend these twigs when you're nailing them down. Uh, they'll just break on you. So make sure that your twigs are nice and pliable, preferably off of something that's living. Just go and clip them. We actually clip these off of our own trees right around the property. Then to apply these uh, twigs to a corbel such as this, we're going to go ahead and use this 16 <laughs> gauge. <laughs> Just kidding. We're not using that. We're going to use an 18 gauge finishing nailer with one inch nails. So we'll get to it. thing we do is we're going to create a flat edge on these pine cones safely you don't want to burn you don't want to cut through too much of the pine cone because if you get to the inner core it'll just start falling apart on you I'm using a disc sander with a 50 grit disc and then I have a dust collector here this is kind of a messy process kind of like the last grinding procedure I did um, I recommend doing it outside if you don't have a dust collector because you'll just coat the inside of your garage or shop with all this dust. So I have the dust collector and I set this up so when the disc is turning, the dust blows into this dust bowl right here. So we're going to go ahead and start this off. The other thing is you want to wear safety glasses and gloves. Um, if you're not real comfortable doing it, you'll want to use a thicker glove, uh, maybe a welder's glove or just something thicker. So if your finger slips off the, the pine cone, um, you can use a variable speed disc grinder as well. So it's not turning so fast. So when your finger does hit the sander, it doesn't just, you know, take it down to the bone. So anyhow, here we go. We're going to get started. <laughs> go ahead and apply the pine cones to the um, I have the other one laid out here so I can kind of match the layout I mean every corbel is different they're all custom um, just so I can kind of match the placement of where I put the pine cones so I'm gonna go ahead and place them get them ready here figure out what sizes there's different sizes kind of want to just lay them out change them out if they're too big too small Okay, now we're going to go ahead and nail them in. You want to make sure you don't push down too hard on the pine cone. Once again, I'm using, this is an 18 gauge nailer with one inch nails. You don't want to really use, you don't want to use anything bigger than that because it'll just split the wood, it'll split the pine cone, but they hold together really well. I just put two nails in it.
All right, so there you have it. Two corbels I did almost no work on, but I'm ending this segment by saying this was just scrap timber, four by eights with uh, some two by sixes on top. Would otherwise be thrown away or burned in a burn pile, but we turned them into some really cool rustic looking corbels. Uh, thanks again for tuning in to another You Can Do It episode, and we'll see you next time.